Good evening, folks. Welcome to the Flower Farming Business Starting, Sustaining, and Surviving Series. I'm glad you've decided to join me here this evening. My name is Lisa Mason Ziegler, and if we haven't met before, I am a flower farmer, author, um, teacher, and the owner of thegardenersworkshop.com. And thegardenersworkshop.com, in fact, is bringing you this four-part series um, that you're watching, and we are just really dedicated to helping people at all levels to grow and enjoy flowers and to even build businesses on their, um, their passion for flowers, right? So I definitely have notes tonight because I have a lot I want to say to you guys. And just right out of the gate, so you're on the Gardener's Workshop Facebook page. And if you don't already like our page, I invite you to do that. And if you're an Instagram or if you're over on Instagram, I am too. So I would love it if you would follow me over there. And in fact, we also have a YouTube channel where you can find lots of our um, videos over there as well as on our website. So I really, this whole series is about, this is a time of the year for a lot of people where they're thinking, dreaming, worrying, being concerned, do you, should I do it? Should I continue being a flower farmer? So tonight, the first night, I just really want to talk to you guys about flower farming. And just to start right off with, you know, is flower farming for you? Because I have to say, that's really a question that I think a lot of people, and you're going to hear me say this probably more than once tonight, a lot of people get swept away in the beauty of the flowers. First off, that is such a gift of our businesses is that our product is so gorgeous. That's what it does to our customers. But unfortunately, many of us, me included, get swept away by that beauty and we don't really think about, okay, what does it take to be a flower farmer? Because it is so much bigger, y'all, than the flowers. And that's what I think sucks so many people in. And then we find ourselves kind of in a free fall. And that's what we really want to, um, to really think about. So for first, you have to remember that to be a flower farmer, that means that you not just you don't just grow flowers, that means you're selling flowers. If you're just growing a lot of flowers, that means you're a great gardener. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it's that next step that when you decide that's what you want to do, um, some things that I really think folks should consider, and there may be many of you, because I'll be really honest with you, I didn't really think about this when I started. And it could have really saved me the long way around. I didn't really think about how I was going to actually make it work with my life, meaning how many hours in a day do I have? How is this going to affect my family? If you have children at home, huge curve in figuring all of that out. Just the day-to-day -day lifestyles. And, I mean, I want to say to you, I'm going to tell you a lot of stuff tonight. And I'm not trying to scare anybody off. I'm trying to save people from making a mistake as well as for those that are going to push forward to make an informed decision because I will tell you after being in this circle and this business for, I think I'm going into my 23rd year. I can never keep, I can't even remember how old I am, y'all. Um, after doing it for all these years, I will tell you that the reward is worth it. Self-employment, um, being an entrepreneur, which if you become a flower farming business, if you own a business and run a business, you too are an entrepreneur. I think a lot of people think that they aren't deserving of that name or even to be called a flower farmer unless they're up and running and out there and just scooping up bucks. And that's just not even true. Um, so the rewards once you get through the weeds are really, really worth it. And the other thing is, especially if you're a first time business owner, you have to learn that you're gonna to have to live this lifestyle. And 
when I say what I mean by that is because most of us are farming at our homes, right? So it's like you are stuck right in the dead middle of it. And if it is not your passion, if it is not enjoyment for you to do what you're, what you get up and need to do every day, um, you will never ever survive this business. Because I will tell you this, there are much easier ways to earn some bucks besides doing this. Um, so this is definitely, um, this is definitely a profitable business, but you have to have that passion. And that's what drives me to do what I'm doing right now. My passion is beyond flower farming. I adore flower farming. I love growing, I love every part of it. But even greater than that, and I discovered this soon after, when I started speaking, I started farming in 1998. It took about two or three years for groups, for me to be kind of noticed. Then groups started asking me to speak. And what became really clear to me is that my greatest gift and passion is empowering other people to grow, whether you're a home gardener or a farmer. And it's becoming clearer and clearer all the time that talking about business and talking about flower farming um, is very um, near and dear to me. And that's what makes and drives me so very, very much. And so I have a paper in front of me with these lists here of just things that I really want to say. And if you are, you know, maybe somebody that's just coming off your first year or your second or third year and you're exhausted, you're totally burnt out. You're like thinking you're quitting for sure. Um, I did post at the head of this feed and it will be posted um, on the feed several times throughout this talk. If you, you should watch my video called Tired and Ready to Quit. And I'm gonna speak to a couple of things that are in there that I'm really gonna suggest you do. Um, but you can request to get the immediate access to that video. And this is the time of year that even, and even more so y'all, the seasoned flower farmers are ready to like burn their farm down because we're hot, we're exhausted. There is a pandemic this year which many have overcome that so amazingly, but it's just been harder, right? So I really encourage you to grab that, um, that video because it'll help you in that for some more inspiration and a little bit of guidance. Because if you are somebody that is just transitioning from a gardener, even if you're an avid big gardener, to a commercial flower farmer, that is a huge bite, y'all. Um, I just can't even tell you how big the difference is. It changes everything. It changes what you grow. It changes how you grow. It is, um, I, will, I would be willing to say to you, the number one failure that I have watched evolve. I mean, there's good and bad things about social media. Um, it's full of information, not all of it's great information or even right information, but you also get to watch people evolve. And um, I just love watching people take this plunge and grow. But another bad side of that is I see a lot of people that are suffering, that are having troubles, that are throwing in the towel after they have invested immensely in time and energy and money um, and the number one thing that I see that causes that is they are thinking like gardeners. I can't tell you what a difference it is, y'all. I mean, I can still, actually, in fact, I launched my online garden store um, eight years after I started flower farming. And I launched it because of the information that I learned as a flower farmer on how to do things in a garden. That, and I was a pretty trained gardener, y'all. I mean, I took master gardening classes and I mean, I read everything and I was a very avid, active gardener and I couldn't believe the things I didn't know. So that is one of the problems that I see many flower farmers in their first few years struggle with and it causes them to really never make it to the end of the rainbow, that is, you got to take those gardener glasses off and put your farming glasses on and you have to learn out what you learn what that means. So, I know that when I started my flower farm, um I definitely took the long road. <laughs> I mean, 
I literally um, hardly knew anything about gardening. I knew zero about farming. Um, and But for to my credit, I had been running a bit, an animal hospital for about 15 years. I was the business manager. So I at least felt like I was knowledgeable in one area in the business part of things. Um, but I definitely took the long road around and I wasted, oh my goodness, I don't even want to think about how much more money I spent than really is necessary now that I know what I know now, looking back um, at how many things that I just wasted so much time on. Um, and I have also seen so many amazingly potential, and I see so many of them right now, potential flower farmers that are spinning their wheels. And by that, I mean they're wasting their time and energies. Time and energy, y'all, is something you'll never get more of. We all have the same number of hours in a day, um, and there's no way to change that. And by wasting your time and not figuring out what is significant and that you need to do for your business, um, and that is a big part of becoming a successful business person, no matter what your business really is. Um, but so many great flower farmers, because I'll be real honest with you, this is a pretty hard job. I mean, it's a physical job. And those of us that dive into flower farming typically have an appreciation for that. That's one of the things that we like, right? We're, we love gardening. We love being outside. We don't mind getting hot and dirty. The accomplishment at the end of the day really, really drives us. But if you spend all day doing things on one of your work days that truly were not necessary, did not create more flowers or more people to sell to or more marketing or move your business forward, that is like a wasted day. And there's not but so many times that you can do that and still get up and want to do it the next day. You know, and I really compare it to you know, I thought about this because I was looking at something on our website and I saw the picture of Jonathan and Megan's farm with that rainbow um, over their greenhouse. That is just such a beautiful image. And I thought, I think so many people get so enamored with the flowers, just like we do with rainbows. I mean, you just stop and gaze at them, right? And you think of that pot of gold that supposedly, which we know is not, at the end of that rainbow, and we chase it and chase it and chase it, but you never get there. That is such a great example of what happens to so many people with flower farming because we fall hard for the flowers and we never make it past there. Um, I will not even tell you how many. Um, so last year's class, this was, um, we're going in, this will be my third year of having flower farming school for my class. And last year, the first year, um, I had a student at that out of the gate. Um, she was really eager. She really kind of fell into a niche. Well, that niche kind of evaporated overnight. And it had kind of been handed to her, so she never really had to kind of figure things out. And she kind of was like lost then. And I really had to do some counseling with her to really encourage her um, to move forward. And Y'all, it's so easy to fall for the flowers. And I just want to say to you, if that has happened to you, you can, you can get past that. Um, the flowers are but a very small portion. I want to say less than half of your business. And it's true. The, the, the flowers are the icing on the cake. So I do also, one of the common things that I hear um, from folks is, is there enough room for all these people that are interested in flower farming? And, you know, there are so many opportunities. And I will say to you that most people tend, the people that aren't educated yet in the fla in flower growing business tend to flock to the same, pl same couple of places. That would be farmer's markets, but they're just very public. People see them, they know about them, and also just sell them to flower shops. And those are really obvious places. There are so many not so obvious places. And 
until, and I mean, I say this all the time, but I will, it's worth saying it again. In the United States alone, there are like six to eight billion, with a B, thousand fresh flowers sold every year. That's a lot of flowers, y'all. Less than 20% of those flowers are grown in country. There is no ceiling. There is so many opportunities, and I will say that this pandemic has really flushed out the opportunities to people. I have been so impressed the way that growers have flipped their businesses and found new avenues to sell their flowers when other areas were actually closed down. Um, if we ever topped out the ceiling on cut flowers, y'all, we would all be, I mean, I just don't see that happening. But you have to think beyond farmer's market because let me tell you what I see happening a lot. I see a lot of people just starting to grow flowers, applying to go to the local farmer's market. Maybe they get in, maybe not. Maybe they drive a little further and go to another farmer's market. And then they have flat sales and they think, oh, there's just not enough to go around. That is like, this is exactly what I'm talking about avoiding. That is not really starting your business. Um, that's not doing a lot of um, investigation, figuring out, finding your niche, what's available to you. Um, and I just feel like even more so than last year, the pandemic has fanned people. Um, I've spoken to, I've had several, we've done interviews with a lot of um, successful growers. I mean, growers that have been selling for several years that had to totally pivot their business to change everything. And some of them have even said they actually are thinking of changing their business model to these new areas because they weren't nearly what they thought. So, Y'all, the possibilities, um, I just really want people to understand that the possibilities are pretty much pretty endless. Um, and if you have been facing flat sales or just not having success, there are so many other roads to go down. And, you know, it's not all rosy. Well, the pandemic, again, I'll use that as another example, is even in the times of having every flower you grow sold. Um, that's the situation that we were in for many years. You know, I'm an urban farmer in the middle of the city. Um, I have less than three acres. We never had more than an acre and a half in production. Typically in season, which was about five to six months, depending on, I'm in Hurricane Alley, what the weather does, we would produce 10 to 15,000 stems of flowers a week in season all field grown. I cannot have hoop or greenhouses. And let me tell you, when all your flowers are sold, doesn't mean you no longer have challenges. Um, they're just different challenges. And I just wrote down some of the things that just came to my mind, rough patches, whatever that means. That could mean the best person that helps you on your farm all of a sudden can't work. They fall and break their leg. Their mother gets sick and they're no longer working. Just general troubles happen, y'all, and that is life, and that's another part of becoming a business owner. You learn how, this is my motto, is I always prepare for the worst and pray for the best to happen. And that way, you, you're still gonna get caught off guard, but you're prepared. Exhaustion is a huge bit coup, I mean, for a lot of people, and I will remember, um, one of my students and who has become to be just a really great friend is um, Daniel Shavy of Petal Pickers. And Daniel, um, who I interviewed as having taken one of my class, taken my course, I can remember him saying to me that one of the things that really flipped him was how I employ people. I don't I typically do not employ people full time. And it is purely because of the exhaustion and the heat. Um, you are better off, in my opinion, and I learned this from a seasoned vegetable grower that had 40 years in and was very successful and employed like 20 people. You are better to have two part-time people than one full-time person. Um, I mean, I can barely do the job full-time and survive, and I'm the owner, right? Owners are driven in a different way than your employees are. 
But that was something that Daniel was struggling with was his employees. And then when he realized he needs to not have make not require that people work 40 hours a week out in the heat doing hard, laborious work. Um, so those things happen. Exhaustion is real. Weather catastrophes, pest issues, drought, and even worse for me is rain. Because I don't have any hoop houses, you know, 40 days of rain is a problem. And we have had to face that before. Like three years ago, I learned to do everything in the rain, no matter what. And um, I want to just say again, the request for that link to get my video, the name of it is actually Tired and Ready to Quit. I should have called it, Are You in the Ditch? Um, I do call August and September the ditch months. That's when you just feel like you are down and out. Um, and I really talk about some of these things that can help you over the humps. But here's the other thing, y'all. Struggles mean are a sign of succeeding. Um, they're a sign of success and what I did not understand, I thought, I guess when I started my business, and I mean, I was in, I mean, I'm from a family of entrepreneurs, big business people. I should have known this, but I really didn't. I thought my job, my business was growing flowers, and it is, but that is such a small part. It's learning to deal with problems and handle problems and face problems and put your big girl pants on and do and say things that you would have never been able to say two years ago in a professional, nice way. You don't wear your emotions on your sleeve. You are a business person. Everything's people make business personal, and that's the number one problem. With that problem is, then all of a sudden it's like somebody that's not happy with whatever your product is, you feel like they don't like you. Well, it's not about you, it's about your product. And typically there was something wrong with it. And when you create that wall, this is business and this is personal, that really relieves a lot of that. Um, when you start to have that peace of mind, and I'm gonna say it again, you gotta get that video because the closing story in that video about a fire extinguisher changed my business perspective. Um, and you'll have to just watch it. So, you know, and then just a little inspiration because, you know, so often we read or hear people say things that you think to yourself, yeah, for you, that might work, but not for me because you just really feel like your situation is the worst. Y'all, I can remember Oh my gosh, back when we used to do farmer's markets and supermarkets and florist, I can remember being alone on a Friday night with 29 buckets of flowers that needed to be made into bouquets for the next day's farmer's market because I had no help to go to the farmer's market with me so I couldn't make them there. I mean, you want to talk about overwhelmed, exhausted, and bawling. Um, I totally and completely get it. And what I want to say to you is every successful person that you can point and think of in our industry, I've listed some here, um, each and every one of them went down this path that you may be going down, but what launched them beyond just struggling all the time and then finally throwing in the towel you know, at year, if you make it to year three, then you might make it to year five or six. But if you haven't gained momentum and figured out how to make this a life you want to live and you're creating profit, you're going to quit. And each one of these people that I'm just going to mention their names here, and I think you might know some of them, you might not. Each one of them got rock solid in growing flowers before they moved on or grew their businesses. The first person I think of is Pamela and Frank Arnowski. And if you don't know who they are, then you have to go find out. They are the rock stars of flower farming. Um, they were, um, they're in Texas and they have a huge farm and um, Frank Frank and Pamela are very good friends of mine, and there is so much information there. You can no longer buy their book. It's called, We're Gonna Be Rich. 
and it is a group of articles that they actually wrote for Growing for Market through years and years and years, and there's so much information. But Pamela and Frank would never be where they are today. They have, they have a farm in Texas and a farm, I think, in Minnesota. They grow peonies up there and flowers in Texas. They'd never be where they are today if they had not locked in and figured out how to run a business and how to grow flowers. I think of Emily, of Fugles Flowers. Emily has been a good, she's in North Carolina. Um, and Emily, I have watched go from, she was a lot like I was. She didn't really know anything about farming. She went from zero to a hundred in like a three year period. And she put her head down, figured it out and is doing it and doing it with two young kids, and now doing it with two young kids that aren't going to school. I mean, I just have so much admiration for her. You know, she loves growing flowers. Um, she, I don't think, has any, is not aspiring to grow 50 acres. Um, she is amazing. You should follow her. She posts, she um, actually sells mixed bouquets on consignment, something I recommended against back in her beginning, and she has totally flipped me on that. Um, she posts pictures of her bouquets that are going out, and um, I mean, it is just really inspiring. And then Daniel of Petal Pickers, that boy is shipping flowers all over the nation. He was not doing that before the pandemic. He has a retail store where they sell garden goods and they also sell his flowers there. He sells to florists and designers. Um, he was, he's only been growing for like four years, if I'm not mistaken. Amazing, because he ran with the business model, not just growing a bunch of flowers. Um, and so, and I bet if you would ask each one of these people, they would say to you that they see the gifts and the rewards in every day. And that's the key, you have to really want it. So those are people that are really doing it. And you know, something that I talk about in that video that I'll tell you here, I talk about, you know, social media is a gift and a curse to take your eyes off of other people for comparing yourself. But if you're looking for all I use, I make a conscious decision every morning that when I look on it for social media, which I don't get nearly much time to do that anymore, to just scroll, that I'm looking for ideas and opportunities. I am not looking to compare myself and to say, oh, I don't have that flower, or I didn't do that, should I be doing that? So easy, y'all, I can fall in it. If I'm having a low day, it could be so easy. Um, but I'll, I talk about that in that video, and social media can be a gift or a curse. So, Part of becoming a business owner, and I will tell you, it's a huge bite to become a business owner, and it's a huge bite to be a flower farmer. You put the two of them together, you really, um, to be successful, and I say that because there are a lot of people out there that are growing flowers and maybe not what I would consider successful, meaning after their first year, they still haven't turned, um, you know, they aren't getting momentum, they aren't learning, they aren't getting better, they aren't getting more customers, they aren't selling more flowers or selling their flowers. Um, I don't wanna say turning a profit. I do believe that you can, the way that I teach, um, which is lean farming, to get in low and start creating income so that you can make a profit early on before you start spending a lot of money um, on infrastructure and higher risk crops. Um, but anyway, every failure, y'all, is an opportunity to turn and learn. Um, some of my best successes were based on the biggest boo-boos I've ever made. Um, and the only real mistake is one that you don't make really good for you. I mean, even, even let's just say, and I read somebody, I'm going to say what plan it was, somebody a couple weeks ago on social media that was running out of filler, and they said they were going to use um, some filler that, in my experience, does not hold up very long at all, and I thought that is going to be a big mistake. And when, let's just say you did that without really testing it out the way you should, because you're desperate, right? It's Friday night, and you need something to put in your bouquets. Um, 
you know, the, the following week and the week after that, when your customers, most customers don't complain, y'all. If you get one complaint, there was probably five other people that weren't happy that that just aren't saying anything to you. Um, but to take those complaints and make the best of them. I mean, that's the way that we look at anything like that now. It's like, okay, where did we screw that up? How did that happen? Uh-huh. Maybe it really wasn't a mess up on your part, but the person thought it was, and why did that happen? Um, you really need to listen to your customers because they will help, they will help, they will tell you what they want. Um, and I um, that video that the link is posted throughout this feed and at the head, um, the tired and ready to quit video, um, I suggest near the end that you make two lists and I'm telling you, those, that list is a amazing, priceless piece of information that you're going to need to make use of this winter. Um, so I would suggest that you get that and do it. And here's the other thing. And I just love my, um, I just have so many great flower farming friends. My friend Janice Harris, um, who's in Canada, she posted a picture on her social media the other day um, of her crew, they were all standing out in the field holding flowers. It was just a great um, posed picture. And she said something like, she understands that they are not an expense. They are an asset of her business. And that is another huge learning curve for people coming from being a gardener and becoming a business owner. Spending money Sound money, and I want to define what I see as sound money. If you haven't been growing for a couple of years, at least, and you don't have a list of customers, and you aren't selling everything that you're pretty much growing now, what would be an unsound investment? Let's see. Buying a ton of expensive bulbs that are high risk, because they're only high risk because they're a high investment, and you have to be able to grow them properly, and then you have to be able to sell them when they're ready. Um, a sound investment is investing in your business and in you, whether that be, and I mentioned this in the other video, um, that, I, that I always I spend money on learning. Um, that is the best money I have ever spent. I wouldn't be doing this right now if I had not invested money in me, and I'll tell you, it is hard sometimes to spend that money. Um, but when you are building your business and buying sound investments, whether that be in you for education, joining the ASCFG, going to conferences, taking courses, um, those are sound investments as long as you make use of them. Um, and here's the other thing that I know that everybody here has a story and I have a story. And what I have learned in the last couple of years, because of courses I'm taking y'all, um, is that our story, particularly in flower farming, is a significant, should be a significant part of our business. And how you utilize that to, um, to share it with your customers. Let me tell you, your customers love seeing, and I can tell you this, my customers love seeing photos of my farm. They love seeing flowers, the beds, the gardens. What do they love more than that? Seeing pictures of my dog, hearing about him. They love the picture, the story I posted, I guess it's been two weeks ago about my husband, Steve, picking this little getting stuck in the golf cart out in the field, picking me this little bunch of flowers. I had never gotten a thousand likes on a post until I posted that. People love looking in. They think we have the most glamorous job on the planet. They want to know about your life. They want to know about you. They want to know about your struggles, your successes, what you're facing, what you're doing. And that story can be shared with your customers. And that's how you connect with people. Um, and that's actually something that we're doing a deep dive and adding as bonus sessions to Flower Farm in School. Um, I've just learned so much about how to do that and how to do it in a really organized way. So that fire extinguisher story I told you about that's at the end of that video, Tired and Ready to Quit, changed my business perspective. I mean, 
I can't tell you guys. Um, so you have to watch it. It's at the end. And I really want to hear from you guys. Does it do that for you? Um, because it really, really helped me. So I'm inviting you to join me back for the next three weeks. So next week I'll be talking about starting um, the fl a flower farm. And then the week after that, we'll be talking about sustaining it. And that means, I mean, how do you do this and keep doing it a year after year and stay successful and stay fresh and stay new and then surviving as a flower farmer um, because it's for the long haul. I knew that I wanted to do this for the rest of my life. Um, after I was in for about six or seven years, I quit. I mean, I used to quit. I quit several, a lot of times when I talk in that video, how many Augusts have I quit flower farming? Probably 22 times every year. But that, that doesn't take long. It gets better, as my friend Janice says, that'll pass too. So lean flower farming really is not just about doing the most with the least to generate the most profit. It also helps with life and it helps with living it and with your family. And um, just remember that growing the flowers is only part of the business. Learning the nuts and the bolts and taking care of um, that stuff and then getting it done, getting it out of the way. I mean, you still have to deal with a lot of stuff, but I find, and I think I faced it first because I came from a business background, a lot of people don't wanna face um, taking care of be, becoming a professional business. Whether they're afraid or they don't know what to do, do it, get right, and you just you can file that away. And I will tell you that that simple step is what separates a lot of people that never, separates those people that find their niche and run with it and those people that just kind of, I'm quitting, you know, I'm not making any money. I can't figure this out. My family's tired of eating cereal for dinner. Been there, y'all. I know all about that. Because you know what, y'all? What is the point of doing this if it sucks the life out of you and your family and you're not earning a profit? So I really do invite you to join me back next Sunday, every Sunday in September, and um, grab that video, Tired and Ready to Quit. I think it's got some really beneficial information and um, this was brought to you by the gardenersworkshop.com where we're making it possible for flower lovers of all levels to grow and enjoy flowers and to build businesses. So till we meet again folks, ciao.